Maisha Poo is here at the gym of the great Devin Haney, y'all. I'm going to fight Dev, y'all. Watch this. See, this is Dio in his element, doing what he do best, making stars out of people, y'all. Check it out. So you guys know how I always say they don't make men like they used to. The ones that I grew up with, they're either dead in jail or tucked away. The men from my era, they they're, uh, stand on their word and take care of their people. And they, they just, the they truth, they're men. And guess what? That's, 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 uh, that's so nice that you say that. You're about to get the respect of, of a young lady like you. Is that something that you had? And it's like being, like no being a real one. That, that means the world to me. Being a real one means being a father. Being a house, being a stand up dude, a good friend. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that old cliche being a, being a real one means that you checked a whole bunch of money. Although I didn't did that too. But I don't consider that part of being a real one. A sucker can check some money. You know what I mean? A sucker can have a bunch of girls, some fly whips, but. But the game, your respect, um, you know what I mean, in um, the time, that, uh, that it's not easy because it's, it's like following the sheep, you know what I mean, and to, to stand out because it's not a lot of us left. I feel, you don't understand how good I feel to be in the presence of both of you guys. And today, they, they don't honor their work. They don't take care of their peoples or their kids. That's because their daddy didn't honor their word. Now you can't keep getting on these youngsters. Some of these old niggas ain't shit. I don't know. Listen, I don't know all them good niggas that you're talking about. That's right. The apple don't fall too far from the tree. So when you want to blame it on them, the youngsters, you got to blame them old niggas. But I didn't say youngsters. Too. I said the men. Hey, so we got to blame them old guys because they wasn't there. I was there from the beginning. Was I there all the Was I there in the beginning? As soon as you came. Came out. Have I been there, baby? All the way. You know what I mean? So that's what that means. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you can look over and you can say he's 25, and I said since he came out, I've been there. You know, you know, you know what I mean? You see, he said absolutely. He didn't say well, you dipped out. You know what I mean? You had to go do this. You had to go that. I'm talking about 25 straight. Oh, there he is over there, right there. There he is, right there. That's not he's talking about how. How he's been such a good dad to you. Oh, awesome dad. Awesome dad. To all of us. And there's my there's my 14 year old. Come on, Sean. Come on, Sean. I mean, y'all pull out y'all. See, you niggas pull out your cars. I pull out my kids. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, can you do that? You know. A lot of times I be laughing on the inside because I don't want them to know how funny they are because they be, you know what I'm saying, they be on some shit sometimes, you know what I mean? And when I did go to prison in 1992, hey Bill, come here for a minute. So, one of the hurtful things was my son coming to prison. Yeah, all been there together? Uh, no, this is him. Oh, okay. It was two. It was two. But, but and, and I used to have to, I used to have to impersonate Barney because he liked Barney. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I swear Barney was always there waiting on me. <laughs> One big happy family. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And when you got to do that kind of stuff, that 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 affects you in a way. So it's either going to bring out the best in you or it's going to bring out the worst. And, and for me, I never, ever wanted to go back again. I never wanted to put my kids in that pre pre predicament. I wanted, never wanted them to see me there. So uh, thank God. Huh? Um, trying to get some money, you know, um, and trying to do it the trying to do it the easy way, you know what I mean, the way that, um, the first way that someone hiring, you know, on the streets is hiring every day, you know what I'm saying? You don't need no diploma, you don't need no, um, you know, you don't need no experience. Um, so I jumped on the first thing smoking and found myself in the federal penitentiary in a 60-month sentence. Mm. 
Yes, yeah, five years. But it was it was uh, it was more like uh, college for me because as a young man at, at being 22 to go to the feds, I got a chance to see all the big old big olds, and they was putting their pants on one leg at a time, just like me, yeah. going to commissary. So I, I said, you know, ain't no sense in me getting out. And, and topping them, they got life. How you gonna top that? And no, no nigga got out the streets that I saw. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I felt that I had to be that nigga, had to be that nigga for the town, with the with the Rolls Royce, with the Bentley, with all the shit. Um, because there's so many times that we quit, and then and we quit after we go to prison. I want to be the guy that quit. On top. <laughs> so when did you um, get into boxing? Because I was watching you spar a train, yeah. and you know what you're doing. Were you boxing before? No, you no, abs son? absolutely not. Um, that's just an innate um, thing that you do as a as a parent. He started boxing because he was fighting in school. You know, we uh, we left. We left Oakland and moved here. And of course, you know, you never want to be that, that parent that has the kid in the, in the back room that's crying and screaming. So I always showed them enough that, you know what I mean, I wasn't going to have a cry baby, you know what I mean? Of course, we moved here because we wanted a better, a better, bigger house, a better lifestyle, you know, for not only just me, but for all my friends and family. And so yeah. the final time that I went to school when my dad got suspended, I looked at, looked at him and I said, what's going on, man? in front of the principal, you know, as if I didn't already like teaching this shit, right? I was expecting a different answer. So I said, what's going on, man? And he said he was about to hit me. And the principal looked at me just like that. I said, uh, I said, just give us a suspension and we'll come back. I need to talk to him. He said, man, what the fuck are you going here and say that in front of the people? He said, well, he was about to hit me. I said, man, that about to hit you, excuse me. He was about to hit you, even just talking. I said, you know what? I said, you think you know how to fight? You think you know something? I said, I'm going to take you to a gym where it's going to be other kids that fight. And then when I took him that first time, he beat the brakes off. The trainer that was in there, he looked over and he said, man, your kids are natural. And I hadn't heard that shit ever before in life. That he was a natural and anything. Everything took work. You know, we right. played football, we played basketball, but it took work. I never heard him being described as a natural. And from that day forward, I was intending to do my best to uh, bring out all of his, uh, all of his gifts. The guy. How many parents? If I wasn't involved, if I wasn't in the house, and had went to that that parent teacher um, uh, conference. Um, you know, what I have missed, how many other parents have kids that are being described the way he was as, as, a, as quote, a bad, no, but they were describing as a bad kid. Several times I had been to the principal office about him fighting, and you know, they were saying that, you know, his attention, uh, he, he was he had one of those ADD kind of things, yeah. right? He was totally being misdescribed, and I, right. and I know that there's probably a lot of other African American kids that are being misdescribed. And when we were young, what they would give the kids was Ritalin or give the kids these other things to calm them down. I wasn't going to do none of that. You know, I thought that I, I could somehow just give him the attention that he needed and it would, it would help our problem. We found out that he was something special in that ring. And, and that same aggression that he has naturally, that same, um, that attention that he has. All right, baby, love you. That's about it for Maisha Poo. She's going to find some more questions to tell me tomorrow. So you tune in. This was part one. Pretty girl problems. Pretty girl problems. Hey. Asshole niggas got problems too. <laughs> You're gonna find out tomorrow about that. Bless you, baby.